viewers, my dear friends, welcome back to the channel and today we are back in Kingdom Come Deliverance. So, as you may have seen from the little sneak peek at the beginning of the episode, in between sessions I did some shopping, I sold some stuff and I freed some space in both my inventory and the inventory of our dear, dear horse, Pebbles. Say hello, Pebbles. Stop, stop being so rude. Oh, you horse. Okay, don't step on that. And if you saw, we are in the city of Ujits. Now, we have two purposes here. One is to, of course, find the limping bandit. The other is to start to learn how to read. And I think that that's the one I'm going to try to do first. So let's see if this man has something to tell Good us. To you. What do you need? I need to know where there lives a fellow with a limp. I'm looking for a fellow who lives here, but I don't know his name. Do you know anyone with a limp? What would you want with him? Well, it's no skin off my nose. The bastard has a cottage on the edge of the village by the road to Ratai. All right. God be with Sir, you. I thank you. And, okay, visit Lubosh. Should I go? Or should I just... You know, I've been... I spent so long with... Um, with main missions that I just feel like I need to do some side stuff. So, hello. No, it's not you I want. Good day to you. What do you need? Uh, the fellow with a limp. I'm looking for a fellow who lives here, but I don't know his name. Do you know anyone with a limp? What would you want with him? Oh, so they all say the same thing. Okay, so okay. end dialogue. Okay, thank you. You're a shop guard, so... Okay, so... the Oh, not through here. I can jump through here, so let's... Uh. All right. Ah, it should be here. So scribe, here we are. Let's go. Excuse me. Excuse me. Open. Ah, I can then get some books out of here to help me start read. Uh, hello. I. Sorry. Could you? No. Wow. Rude much. Sir, excuse Jesus me. Christ, be praised. Okay. I'm looking for a fellow who lives here. What can you tell me about the fellow with a limp? Do you know anyone with a limp? Must be that farmhand, Lubosh. I don't know what the hell you'd want him for, and I don't much care. He's got a cottage on the edge of the village near the stream. All right, thank you. I'd like to, learn, to learn to read. To read. You? Hmm. You don't look like the makings of a priest or clerk. But why not? I've taught all sorts. Bear in mind, it won't be all that easy. You'll need plenty of time and a few groschen for my trouble. Of course. Of course. We can all get right. started. I don't want to waste time. We can get started. The sooner I master it, the better. Very well. I will require some groschen from you, though. And set aside at least a couple of days so I can put you through your paces. If indeed time is of the essence. All right. Here are you I guys. have enough corruption. Then we may as well start. Let's go. If he did break his vow, but better than to dishonor it here. May he follow his All right. So we get a small montage. Oh, wake up, Henry. It's time we were getting on. So, let's see you read a bit. Let's go, you can do it. There's a book here on the table. Try to read it. Will I write? Right. You ought to be able to. It's a simple text. Come back once you've worked your way through it. All right. So, read. Oh, this is interesting. So, reading. Being able to read was a very rare skill in the Middle Ages, and a common blacksmith's son certainly wouldn't have, wouldn't have been literate. To understand written tests, you, you will have to find someone... Okay. Language and literature. 
Oh, right. So, since Henry doesn't understand the words, the text is kind of gibberishy. So, ah, one day a countryman going to the nest of his goose found there an egg all yellow and glittering. When he took it up, it was as heavy as lead and he was going to throw it away because he thought a trick had been played upon him. But he took it, took it, he took it home on second thoughts and soon found out and soon found to his delight that it was an egg of pure gold. Every morning the same thing occurred, and he soon became rich by selling his eggs. As he grew rich, he grew, he grew greedy, and thinking to get at once all the eggs the goose could give, he killed it and opened it, only to find nothing. Okay, this was interesting, so do I just back up? What do I do? <coughs> okay. Do I have to memorize it? No, no, no. Don't, don't go anywhere. Don't, don't you dare close that door on me. Why do you always do this? Okay. I've read the book. I've read the book. Wonderful. So tell me, what have you learned? Okay. That being greedy doesn't pay. That being greedy doesn't pay. Excellent. You're one of my most talented pupils. You've uncovered the meaning hidden in the letters. Ha. Like I told you, books are valuable. And the words that you place in them ought to be no less so. Does that mean that I can read then? Yes, you have the foundation. Remember, my boy, the pen is mightier than the sword. To fully learn your way around words will take a lot more reading yet. Now we'll move on to the second lesson, which will be much harder. Many books are written in Latin, the language of erudite and religious of men. If you really want to be able to read, there's no getting away from Latin. There's a book on the table with some text. Read it and then come back. You need not understand it, but you should master the letters. I only just managed the fable about the goose, and now you're asking me to tackle Latin. <laughs> you're a clever lad. You'll manage. This is a video game, Henry. Oh. Ah, uh, excuse me. The door is locked. Well. What? Oh, it's because it's almost night time. Oh, come on, you. <sighs> Well, I, I mean, can you open the shop, please? I really want to get this test, this, this quest over with, so please open up the bloody door, will you? Come on, you can do it, Robin Hood. Thank you, master. Yeah. Shut up, will you? Let me sit down and read. Ah, now we're going to the Latin text. All right, read. Oh God. Uh, Nulsun e libre tamalsu non like like her maybe parte prosit. Libri muti magistri? Nu. Nuts. I don't know Latin, as you can imagine. Not many people do. Optimus orator est qui pausi verbis plurima dicit? So, a good speaker is he who... Okay, I'm just making this up. I don't know anything about Latin, but orator makes it sound like speaker. 
because it's, it has the same basis. Okay, I've read the page. I read the page. So tell me, Distrupule, what's written there? Nutus sed libertini a. Ah, nullus e liber tan malos ut non a alike. Not like alike parte prosit. It's this one. Uh, nullus est liber tam malus. Uh, <laughs> non alique uh, parte prosit. Good heavens! Don't tell me you haven't had lessons before. Excellent. Well, there's nothing more I can teach you. Congratulations. You can go and be ordained right away. Thank you, Domine. I'm feeling a lot uh, wiser. <laughs> smart. You're smart now, Henry. Ah, oh, this was cool. Now, sir, all I need to do, really, is get the books you have here. Okay, I'm going to take all. And... Okay, this is a very hard lockpick, so... Just... Okay, this is just booze. I don't need booze. I need books, not booze. Okay, you don't have any more books. I'm actually gonna sit down and and try and read the books. Okay, so inventory. Uh, others. Ah, Sir Adalbert. Read. Oh my. This is a big one. Okay. On St. Adalbert, upon the death of Bishop, Bishop Dietmar, the first bishop of the Kingdom of Bohemia, Wojtke, known as Adalbert, of the Slav Slavnik clan, took his place. It transpired in the year 982, recalling to mind the words of his predecessor that amongst the common people, many injustices, many injustices had spread, that polygamy amongst the nobility and blood feuds amongst the people did flourish, that no soul did honor neither Sabbath nor only nor holy days, and in their place they held markets, that Christians were sold into slavery, and that in the countryside pagan customs did flourish. He resolved to devote his life to fighting against such in iniquity. I iniquity, yeah, iniquity. For five years did he endeavor to eradicate these iniquities. Ah, there's the word right there. But he failed, and disgusted, he traveled to Rome to beg the Holy Father for counsel. And he said unto him, My son, if you are incapable of leading your people, then redraw, and at least try to save yourself. And he wanted to journey to Jerusalem, but it was impossible to pass himself off as a common pilgrim, for his bishop's vestments gave him away, but cast them aside he could not. And he gave his possessions to the poor, and he did cast aside his vestments, and he secluded himself in a Benedict monastery for several, several years. But here, as well, he did see how morality had been degraded, and how the monks lived a nearly hurtly life, and in disgust he departed and returned to pastry and the coursier. To rectify at least some things, he founded Brevnov Monastery, as well as several others, and invited monks of great morals to them to live and devote themselves to God, according to the strict, strictest monastic laws. Oh God, I'm almost as bad as Henry. To the strictest monastic laws. In the year of our Lord, 995, a horrible catastrophe struck his family. 
every last man and child was murdered at the fortified town of Lipsy, whence only Adalbert escaped, perhaps because he was not there, or because no soul that laid a hand upon a bishop. People evil of tongue claimed that it was the Primslid clan that did commit this massacre to solidify its power in Bohemia. Others say that it was Adalbert himself who was responsible, for he offered an adulterous wife who, according to custom, should have been killed asylum in his search, and thus the disgraced clan of the husband wanted vengeance, but not finding him at Lipsy, they killed his family instead. Sorrowed and disgusted, Adalbert once again retired from his Fafaris and set off as a missionary to the north, to the land of the pagan Prussians. There he desired to spread the Christian faith and to fight against the pagans idolatry. But the local inhabitants did not wish to see him and greeted him with stones and sticks. Seeing such idolatry, he destroyed their idols and chopped down their sacred grove, for they did bow before trees and consider them to be holy. When the pagans saw this, they killed Adalbert, and their trees did drink his blood and his body they left them. It was only Bolsellos Bulls, the Brave who had the holy remains of this martyr taken to Prague. Wow, this this was the story of Saint Adalbert. Jesus Christ, this was a long one. Okay, I'm not going to read more today. Let me know if you want to see more reading done on my part. But I think for now we did a lot. This quest was shorter than I expected. Can I jump on the roof? No, I can't. Sadly, I can't. Who's brave enough to try horseradish hotter than a burning torch? Come now! No, thank you. Now I'm sorry I did. How's that? The roof is Apple only fit for firewood. Alright. So, let's try and find this bloody limping bandit, shall we? And see what the guy has to say for himself. Oh. Sure. All right. Hello, lady. I wish to talk to you. Mother of God, you look like you've been assaulted. Is it that bad? It's not that bad. I mean, I don't need to ask about the fellow with a limp. I already know where he is. I was looking for other dialogue options, so I maybe I can level my what speech do you up. Here? Do you need anything? Uh, no, not really. You have nothing else to offer. I want to wash myself. Ah, thank you. I'm, I, I feel cleaner already. Is there a bathhouse around? There might be here. This may be it. I think this is it. But sadly, I get to the bandit before that, so... We'll see. But the reading quest and the reading skill tree is very interesting. Oh, am I too late? I might be, because I decided to, well, you know, stop for a quest and so... Oh yeah, he's dead. Move along, citizens. Move along. There's nothing to see here. If that's what you call nothing to see, I'd like to know what something to see looks like. Okay, something happened. Jesus sake, Peter. This is all I need. We'll have to send word to Sir Hanush. That might not be necessary. Who are you? I'm Henry of Scalitz, in the service of Hanush's Captain Bernard. I'm investigating the attack at Neuhof, and... I think this could be related. Okay. Well, I'm the bailiff of Auschwitz. And I say we don't want any of that kind of trouble around here. What makes you think this has anything to do with Neuhof? So there was I mean, this guy... Farm recognized yeah. someone from Auschwitz among the bandits. 
They have no bandits or murderers around here. Who kind of do? They say you had a limp. <gasps> Not a limp. Well, allow me to introduce you to Limpy Lubosh. Ooh. Or all that's left of him. You don't want to smell that. Ooh. Hello, Lubosh. Nothing's ever easy. I'll have to take a look around and ask a few more questions, if that's all right with you. You can take this mess off my hands and welcome to it. As for what else there is to find out, I don't know. But look and ask all you like. Yeah. I wonder if I had come straight here, something else would be different. But now we'll never know. Who was Limpy Lubosh? Who was Limpy Lubosh? A poor crofter and a scoundrel. Can't say I'm too surprised what happened to him. He kept company with all sorts of vermin. He was always getting into some kind of trouble. Punch-ups in the tavern and what have you. All right. Why did he limp? How come he limped? He got that from some villainy or brawl a long time ago. Okay. Has he been up to anything suspicious lately? Hmm. I don't know. The last few days he didn't go anywhere. He was home the whole time. But he always kept everyone in the village at arm's length. Okay. Did he have any kith or kin in the village? Mm, none. A loner he was. I don't know the last time I saw him with anyone. Hmm. Weird. Do you happen to know where he was on the night of the Neuhof raid? I've no idea. He kept his distance from other folk. So you never knew if he was away or holed up at home. Okay, but someone must have seen him. When did you find the body? And did anyone see anything? Just now. And nobody saw or heard anything. I don't know how they could gut him like that without someone hearing him scream. Well, he could have... Thing about he could have been dead when they gutted him. All right, so you're the bailiff, you're a villager. My respects to you. What can you tell me, sir? I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Lypa. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? Of course, ask away. Okay. That man Lubosh who was murdered, what was he like? He was a drunk who was always looking for a fight. Nobody liked him much, but... I wouldn't wish an end like that on any man. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Well, now I think of it, I haven't seen him around for a while. No idea where he was skulking. Possibly near Neuhof. Do you know what Lubosch was doing the day Neuhof was raiding? Neuhof. Not a clue. Alright. Do you know anyone Lubosch used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? He was a loner. He didn't even have any mates in the tavern. Well, that's all. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So, there's a few people with names here. Well, there's more than I imagine, but there's Lumia, Marouche, Joseph, or Joseph, Maple, Pavel. And mash. All right, let's start with you. Jesus Christ, be praised. Okay. I come in the name of Sahanish of Lipa. Yeah, yeah, we know. No, I don't know anything about it, but ask all you want. All right. That man Lubosh who was murdered, what was he like? I didn't really know him. He kept to himself, even in the tavern. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Come to think of it, he was in church yesterday. He was even talking to the priest and went to confession. I was wondering what he was up to, to take to the faith all of a sudden. But I suppose no sins do dark for God's mercy. All right, talk to the priest. You know what Lubosh was doing the day Noy. I was coming from the tavern very late that night, and I caught a glimpse of someone entering the village. He looked like he was in a hurry. There was only a shadow against the sky, but after what happened, I wouldn't wonder. OK. 
Okay. Do you know anyone Lubos used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? Not with anyone from the village. He used to sit in the tavern next to us sometimes, but he never said much. All That's right. Hmm. So, touch. We have a lot of people to interrogate. Okay, let's close the door. Don't bother me while I work. Oh God. Judas. Judas, ah. Looks like this is meant to be a warning. But for who? And why? Maybe the gang had a falling out. But a bandit who knows how to write isn't something you see every day. Okay. Lord above, they did a hell of a job on him. Must have been agony. How come no one heard anything? It was probably dead. It? Looks like someone's hit him very hard on the head. Yeah. Could they have bludgeoned him to death and then gutted him? That would explain why he didn't scream. That is my... That is my thoughts exactly, Mr. Henry. Alright, open. Okay. It's not really Rob. And the man is dead. Hmm. Nothing here. Okay. Uh, there's some food. I'm not gonna take the food. I am, however, going to open the chest and see what's here. Alright, new level in lockpicking. What do you have here? Okay, you have some bandages. I'll take the bandages. Uh, I could take the skins. They're not really worth it that much, so I'm going to leave them. Right, open. I imagine this is just food here. A bed. Bed, quite simple. He led a simple life, it seems. Ah! What the? Excuse me? How the. Why are you here? God be with you. What can I do for you? Maybe not be in the scene? I've come in the name of the Hanish of Lyper. I'm investigating the massacre Everyone in Everyone is entering today. I'll murder here as well. I don't know how I can help. Well, you can who start by... Who was yeah. You could see at first glance he was no good. I kept well out of his way. Then why the hell is suddenly everyone entering in his house? Stop... Jesus Christ, the people of Bohemia have no manners. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? There wasn't sight or sound of him for a long time. And then yesterday, he turned up at the church and even talked to the parish priest. I never saw him do that before. Probably had a bad conscience. Okay, so this is the second person telling me to you go speak with the priest. You know what was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? I don't think he was home. I didn't see him all day. Okay... Do you know who Lubos used to spend time with? Kin or friends? As far as I know, he had nobody at all in this world. Mm, okay, that's so... It. Thank you. That's the second person who's told me to go to the priest. So... There's nothing here to inspect. You can eat from the pot, but there's no point. And why were there people just coming in? Just out of nowhere? Ah, and now you're all gone, nitwits. It's because it's night time, isn't it? Okay. Uh, I mean, I could investigate. But, um, yeah. I'm going to leave this here for a bit. I am going to save. And I'm going to exit. And, yeah, this is going to be it, uh, yet another cliffhanger in the long Kingdom Come Deliverance series. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you'd be so kind. And I bid you all a fantastic weekend, and I will see you next time for more Kingdom Come Deliverance. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.